Hey everybody, it's Joe DeGanzik. This is another episode of Lighting Answers and of our Q&A series. This time it's the lighting version instead of the home automation version we did a couple days ago. The Q&As are officially back. We're going to do them twice a month, um, generally near the beginning of the month, and we'll take all of your emails and comments, throw them into a grab bag, and see which ones come out. Anyways, um, it'll be the best, uh, most interesting ones, uh, I think, to the audience. Uh, we have to work forwards in time because we skipped a lot of them, and uh, so we're basically catching up at this point. And uh, so look forward to these every single month and continue to uh, send in your emails and uh, post those comments. So let's get right to it. Um... I haven't memorized all these, so I have to look at the phone. An email from John. I bought the new Cree uh, Airflow 40 watt equivalent, and it doesn't dim as well as the old incandescent bulbs. What do you recommend? That's sort of question one. Also, the Cree are toward the blue spectrum. Want a warmer bulb? Okay, so kind of two questions, similar kind of thing. So aside from the packaging itself being pretty much blue, um, the Cree is really not towards the, uh, the cool spectrum. I would say, and if you watch our um, video uh, from last June where we compared multiple different bulbs, um, our buying guide, um, really you can see those differences. I'm not going to repeat them here. The Cree packaging, I hope you bought the right version. The Cree packaging, the LED is in yellow for warm white and blue for daylight white, and the blue is going to be more towards the blue side of the world. So aside from the packaging, I'm really not sure. Now, on the dimming side, yes, you hit it right on the head. That's one of my favorite subjects. We went into detail in the buying guide. Uh, there should be a link on the video description or a corner or something like that um, that you can click over um, to there. Maybe you've already watched it. Anyhow, the answer is your dimming will vary. We are used to, many of us, uh, not uh, many of you are used to this guy, which is the regular old incandescent light bulb that dimmed very well, or it's halogen cousins, spot bulbs, anything that had a burning filament um, that wasn't an arc lamp um, worked very well on traditional dimmers, whether they're rotary dimmers, home automation dimmers, whatever. Once we get to LED, it's a different story because it's electronics and it just doesn't work the same way. Dimmers have to be made for it. The LED bulbs aren't going to perform the same way on every single type of dimmer. Even though the manufacturers work really hard to make them compatible, we, they've been racing to, to make strides in that area. And initially um, they were terrible five, six years ago and they've gotten a lot better. Uh, it took me a number of years to kind of make the jump to LED, as weird as that sounds, because I'm very picky about my uh, dimming and what I want out of my lighting. So uh, we're actually going to have a whole dimming episode, but I want to just show you something real quick. We can do, we can do a quick demo. Behind me are um, a bunch of different lights, and I'm going to turn off a couple of them uh, via my home automation system. So let's take out... A few of these guys. So what you're going to see now, um, and you'll see some banding effects, is because we're using, um, you know, aside from the light that's on me, we're we're using um, kind of low lighting uh, levels in terms of uh, trying to capture low light um, and high frame rate um, videography with traditional home lighting uh, LEDs, and they're not always perfect for that, um, but they're perfect for your vision and and, and your home lighting. Um, so that's why you see the banding in the background. So behind me, the two solar table lamps, they have 40 watt equivalent Cree uh, four flows. And then uh, farther behind me in the corner is another LED uh, uplight that's a PAR20, kind of one of these little flood lamps. They're both on the same brand of dimmer, but two different actual generations of the dimmer. Um, so I want you to notice uh, what goes on. I'm going to turn off the light that's in front of me. There we go with that, and I'm going to bring up the other guys to full brightness. So we start somewhere, and then we're going to go down uh, from there. So we're almost at full brightness, I think. There we go. Now we're going to go all the way down. There we go. So we're doing a 20 second, I call it the dimming torture test. Usually it's about 30 seconds. Um, so it's going to go all the way down. Let me get out of the way so you can see what's going on. Um, the one against the wall is going to blink off 
right before it goes all the way down and you noticed that the um, see there it was you'll notice that the Cree um, dimmed all the way down first dimmed down very very nicely and let me bring us back up here and there we go um, so anyways um, the the difference is the dimmer the difference is the bulbs and right now in this state-of-the-art uh, world of LED lighting and dimming your dimming will vary I can't I can't say any more about that and I don't want to put too much time into it in this particular Q&A episode but we are going to have a special um, dimming episode um, coming up and we're going to talk all about dimming stuff LEDs dimmers um, warm white non dimming you know, you know, color change and color temperature, all that good stuff. So, John, thank you for your question, and keep watching, and let's move on to the next one. Okay, another comment, uh, this one from Frank. What bulb would you recommend for outside lighting? We live in an area where it gets as low as 10 below. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you for your comment. So, a simple answer to this, um, and if we look at just one of our, uh, if we go back to our Cree LED, the box officially says... Uh, I already figured this out. I didn't. <laughs> it's very fine print. Uh, this particular bulb, and I believe the Cree bulbs in general, um, go. Their temperature range is from minus 13 to positive 113 Fahrenheit. That's a pretty good range. And what you'll notice also is that um, if we take like traffic signals, right? Take a look at this one. Uh, this is uh, right here in the Phoenix area. Traffic signals have to be able to withstand all kinds of different different temperatures. Here we get as high as 120 or 122 in the summer. We get as low as maybe the high to mid 20s in the winter. But LEDs and most likely specialized for street lights, um, street lighting and out, any outdoor lighting, um, some of them are going to be more hardened towards you know lower and higher temperatures. Some areas that have a lot of snow in the winter actually wind up with a problem. Their traffic signals tend to not freeze up, but they get frozen over or the snow doesn't melt because LEDs don't get warm enough to melt the snow. Um, like their previous generation, which were basically 150 to 300 watt incandescent flood bulbs, which would had plenty of heat to melt snow. So sort of a strange effect. We're saving energy, but then you can't see the actual traffic signals because they're snowed over. And of course, it depends on the traffic signal head as well. Um, so, so sort of a fun fact. But thanks, Frank, for your comment. Um, and generally, I think you're probably going to be good with nearly any LED light bulb that you can find in stores. Always check the packaging, um, but you're probably good with almost any of them. Our third and final question is one from another Frank, not the same one from before. Um, and it's more of a comment, not really a question, but it kind of told me I need to go over this topic and we're going to actually have a whole episode like I talked about on dimming. So Frank just replaced the rest of his incandescent light bulbs. You know what? I'm talking about these guys, right? Um, with Cree four flows. Okay. And we've talked about these on the show. If I can get this <laughs> set up right in the shot. Um, so he just replaced these because he was tired of the yellow dimming effect, the warm dimming effect that comes built in with pretty much any incandescent or halogen light bulb. Now, personally, I like that effect. I'm a fan um, in most situations. And he replaced them in his vanity because he didn't want the yellow glow um, because it didn't make sense when it was dimmed down. In general, yes, incandescents do the warm glow thing. They they change color temperature from 2700 down to about 2200, if we want to get technical. And LEDs don't do that. This will stay the same color temperature that it was built to run at, whether it's at full brightness, 5%, 20%, 50%, anything in between. And this confuses people because they look at it and they dim it and it doesn't do what they expect it to do. And so manufacturers have tried to solve that. If I pick up the right bulb here, there we go, Philips. This is a warm glow bulb from Philips. It changes color temperature as it dims down. Now, 
Let's just run a comparison. I'm going to replace the Cree 4 flows in the sofa table lamps behind me real quick. And we're going to put these guys together and see how they really compare in terms of warm glow dimming. This is the natural one. This is the we'll make it work kind of sort of one. And let's just take a look real quick. Okay, so I've replaced the bulbs. The one in the sofa table lamp closest to me is the Philips Warm Glow Bulbs, a 60 watt equivalent LED bulb that changes color temperature to mimic the warm glow thing as it gets lower in intensity. The one farthest away from me is the actual incandescent light bulb, full 60 watts. You can already tell they're both at 15% intensity right now. You can tell that they act differently. The one on the far side is barely on and you can't see it because of the studio light in front of me um, and the other lighting and then the other one is is definitely at its 15% but 15% LED compared to you know incandescent is a different story so speaking of that studio light let's go ahead and kill that off and let's kind of uh, go back to uh, kind of our little demo that we did last time but this time it'll be with these two different bulbs you can ignore the corner light in the back um, this time because we don't care about what it's going to do we're just comparing you know, apples to apples or apples to oranges, sort of. Um, apples to apples as close as we can. Um, and you can see that also it's um, kind of orange, the Philips uh, LED bulb, because it's trying to mimic that warm glow. But again, it's tough because the, the actual intensity doesn't match. So let's bring these guys down here. And we'll take out a few other things. So you can probably see just a little bit that it's just barely bright. Uh, I'm talking about the uh, the incandescent light bulb on the far the far side. So let's go and bring them both all the way up to full brightness, and we'll bring them up. Of course, the corner one's going to come uh, up as well, but that doesn't matter. So now they're coming both up to full brightness, right about there. They're fully about the same as to my eye. They're both both about the same color temperature at full brightness. It definitely changes once we dim them down. So here's our 20 second dimming torture test and let's start now. And you'll see that they actually start getting um, lower in intensity and they both kind of glow orange. That's kind of a cool effect. But you'll see the incandescent dim off first followed by the Phillips. So again, like we've said before, your dimming results will vary. So let's bring that up. And there's that guy. And let's bring the studio light back up. So that's the difference in color temperature and how things work uh, with LED versus incandescent. The same goes for fluorescent CFL, which, you know, GE just announced that they're going to phase out CFLs. Thank goodness. Um, in favor of getting LED to be the broadly adopted type of light bulb that's out there. Uh, I expect more companies will follow in their footsteps. So that's it. That's it for our Q&A. Um, the answer to, is, to um, Frank's comment is basically that for now, unless you buy specialty LED bulbs, you're stuck with LED bulbs that um, don't change color. Uh, if you like that, then you're good to go. If you don't like it, then you need to find um, specialty LED bulbs, which there are not a lot out there at this point. When there are, we'll let you know. So have you subscribed to Lighting Answers? You really should. You get all of our episodes on more than just lighting. Lighting design, our home projects, home kind of, not really home decorating, but uh, lighting design for your home. And of course, home automation and the internet of things and all that cool stuff. So I think that's it. I'm Joe Deganzik for Lighting Answers, and I will definitely see you next time.